Hello, marine biology students. In this video, we're going to talk about kelp forests. So we've discussed the soft bottom inner tidal and seagrass meadows. Now let's spend some time talking about the hard bottom subtital and kelp forests. The hard bottom subtitle communities are actually less common than soft bottom communities, and they usually develop along submerged rocky shores. In contrast to the soft bottom communities, the hard bottom communities are dominated by epifauna and seaweeds. In shallow water. Space is highly competed for on a hard rocky bottom with community interactions influencing the distribution of organisms in addition to larval settling. Grazers and predators shape community distribution as well. Sea urchins are one of the main grazers on hard rocky bottom communities. There will be a greater amount of seaweed growing because a presence of hard substrate and a greater number of herbivores feeding directly on the seaweeds or on detritus as well. Phytoplankton will also be abundant and the filter feeders will be able to feed both on the phytoplankton and on the detritus. The carnivores in turn feed on these primary consumers. We call hard bottom communities that are dominated by brown algae kelp forests. Kelps come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but most of them grow to be very large. They develop only on rocky bottoms in water as deep as light allows. They are fast growing some growing as many as 20 inches a day, and they may also form a floating canopy. Kelp forests are sites of high primary production. In the North Atlantic, the most common species of kelp are in the genus Laminaria. which is one of the smaller species of kelp with maximum heights of around three meters. On the Pacific coast of North and South America, the most common kelp is the giant kelp, Macrocystis. They can form thick, complex forests with very high species diversity. Some of these macrocystis can grow over 30 meters in length. Kelp requires cold waters, and so we will find these kelp where there are cold surface currents in the oceans. There is high species diversity within the kelp community, and there is complex zonation. much as you would see in a terrestrial forest with different organisms living on the bottom or up in the canopy, or even on the growing structures themselves. In a kelp community, sea urchins are very important herbivores. And the organisms that prey on herbivores also play an important role in balancing the community. While urchins feed directly on kelp, Many other members of the kelp community feed on small little pieces of kelp that have broken off the larger. This is called drift kelp, and it is an important source of detritus, which feeds many members of the community. We see zonation in kelp forests, not only in distance from shore, but also depth in water. As we saw in seagrass meadows, sea otters also play a key role, being a keystone predator in these communities. They're able to keep the urchin numbers down, resulting in lush kelp density. However, 
as the number of sea otters drop in abundance, either from predation on other predators or because of humans. This results in an increase in the number of urchins, and therefore a decrease in the robust diversity of the kelp forest. So that takes us to the end of our discussion of kelp forests. Now before our next video, I would like you to think, what if the geography around you was determined by the actions of your ancestors? Well, we'll talk about that as we discuss coral reefs. See you in the next video.